The fortune-making spirit of today's marketplace, The Rob Black Show. Welcome in, Rob Black and your money. I'm Rob Black, talking money, investing, and much, much more. Yesterday was not such a good day on Wall Street. The Nasdaq, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average all closed lower. Well, Bitcoin crept a little bit higher to $46,334. It's been a raucously good year on the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. So one month will not deter us and say, oh, we're so sad for ourselves. Get Keep in mind, it's early in September. We're only a third way through September 10th. So just be prepared mentally so that you don't have to like, I don't know. I don't want to be your cheerleader. <clears throat> what else is out there right now? The U.S. Open shows us the that every dog has his day. Every tournament's different. Every day we have to look at Wall Street a little bit with a closer eye. <clears throat> the combined age of the tennis players who will compete in the U.S. Open is 37. That's their combined age, not their average age of the competitors. It's the combined, a 19 year old's meeting an 18 year old. One of them was a uh, play in tournament kind of player. That doesn't happen very often. Um, the woman who's in the finals, her name is Emma Radukunu. She had already booked an airplane trip back after the final, uh, after the, um, Qualifying rounds. She didn't think she was going to make it this far. Isn't that something? And the woman from Spain, Leila Fernandez, uh, she toppled the number two tennis player in the world. So not too shabby. Uh, four straight days of losses on the Wall Street Journal. Uh, not on the Wall Street Journal, but on Wall Street. But anything can happen is what I'm trying to say. When you have two young tennis players show you, like there is some randomness in the world. Otherwise, we'd all own an island. Moderna stock, Moderna stock, Moderna, you murdered Moderna. Moderna stock popped yesterday after it said it was working on a two-in-one vaccine that would protect against COVID and the flu. Oh, and it also cleans your hair while it's at it, which is nice. That's a joke. I was more intrigued on their anti-cancer, -can uh, trying to get cancer uh, immune responses higher that they're in phase two on. Uh, mRNA could turn out to be one of those technologies in healthcare that is just revolutionary. Um, Biden announced some sweeping, aggressive approach to finally trying to kick the 18-month-long COVID-19 pandemic vaccine mandates. One new rule would require large businesses to give employees PTO, paid time off, in order to get vaccinated. And Biden's not just taking aim at the private sector. All federal workers will need to get vaccinated within 75 days or face losing their jobs. He's trying to keep schools open, saying that administration needs to beef up their free COVID testing around the country and increase the supply of home testing in an attempt to protect children returning to school in person. So far in the month of August, over 30,000 reported cases in August of children being put in hospitals because of lack of vaccines. The booster shot update um, is coming. We're going to hear more about that in the next couple of weeks. I'm already starting to see the CDC and the World Health Organization talk about how we should probably be approaching it as a three-shot treatment regardless. Congressional Republicans are slamming Biden's plan as government overreach. I don't think so. I think we live in a community. And uh, I don't think this would have been an issue in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I think we would have done the right thing as a nation, but now it's just too politically charged. Um, elsewhere out there, Facebook is getting ready to put something on your face, putting the face back in Facebook. Facebook launched its first ever line of smart glasses in partnership with Rayman yesterday. How did we miss this story? The glasses start at $299, contain tiny microphones, cameras, and speakers to keep them stylish. With the glasses, you can listen to music and podcasts and make calls. You can take videos and photos using just your face um, or your voice charges it, but your face points at it. it kind of gives different media to point and click when you're using it to point, right? Um, I don't know. I, are we ready for glasses, smart glasses? You know, Google Glass, nope. We were not ready for Google Glass. 
Um, were we ready for snap spectacles? Nope, we were not ready for snap spectacles. Will it be Facebook's Ray-Ban stories? Uh, I don't know if it's Facebook's that's going to do it. I think we almost need Apple or Samsung to really legitimize. Facebook wants to popularize whatever device will succeed. To that end, Zuck has more than 10,000 people working on consumer hardware for Facebook. Um, I get it. Today is essentially the 9-11 observance of 20 years later. The attacks on the New York City's World Trade Center struck the U.S. financial industry's central nervous system. It hit big, iconic buildings. Stock market closed for four trading days on it. That's the longest shutdown since the Great Depression. It was disastrous that week. The S&P 500 was down 14%, wiping out $1.4 trillion of market value. So when you see us spending billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars in Afghanistan, I can tell you we lost $1.4 trillion in market value pretty quickly after terrorism. Some people would say, you might want to invest in fighting terrorism. Um, but it also, I would say 9-11 pushed Wall Street into a more, let's get digital. Uh, there was a lot of concern on what digital records were lost, what people had bought that day, what people had not bought that day. Experts worry a major cyber attack could be equally, if not more, devastating for the stock market than September 11th. So even though we went more digital because 9-11, now we're more vulnerable to a different type of terrorist attack, right? Top 1% of Americans have failed to pay more than $160 billion in O taxes per year. The Biden administration is trying to beef up the IRS's capability to crack down on tax evaders with a plan to spend $80 billion on tax enforcement. $80 billion to get $160 billion. That's kind of what we're talking about. I believe, and this is a compliment to myself, that there are no right answers, that there's just compromises. Um... And it's funny because when you look at math problems, there's three or four ways of solving all math problems. And we're set in our ways of, oh, this is how I do it. Hmm. What else is important out there at this point in time? Um, the farmer's dog. Unlike um, other dog foods, they're going after that quality of ingredients for your dog versus the processed food. It's interesting that the same marketing that we do to millennials is the same marketing that we do for dogs. Just throwing that out there for you. Anything that you want to talk about today, we can talk about money investing and more. We have a good show lined up for you today. Lots of content out there, uh, including the steep penalty fine hike by the TSA for mask avoidance. I know, we live in this world, right? More than 60% of American parents want their kids to learn about the ongoing effects of slavery and racism as part of their K-12 education. It's the critical race theory that's starting to race into our schools. And again, guess what? It's a hot topic. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Find us at robblackshow.com. RobBlackShow.com. Questions about how to invest in your retirement? Check out RobBlackShow.com and get in on the conversation. Subscribe to the podcast and video channels. No one cares more about your money than you do. It's time to start to feel good about your financial future. RobBlackShow.com. RobBlackShow.com. What do Apple and the NFL have in common? What do Apple and the NFL have in common? The Chargers suck. Dun -dun -dun. Do you remember Aaron? Do you remember Aaron Hernandez? He was the tight end for the Patriots who was running drugs or something like that, and he ultimately gets arrested mid-season. What do Aaron Hernandez? What? What record did Aaron Hernandez set for a new NFL record? Longest hang time. He's the guy who hung himself in prison. I know you're saying that one's new. Ooh. Ooh. 
Um, did you hear what happened to the NFL player who murdered several people? Did you hear what happened to the NFL player that murdered several people? Oh, he just got a suspension. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's some really dark ones out there, aren't there? Um, about the only people who get more concussions than NFL players are their wives. <laughs> oh, man, no. No. Yeah, it's a pretty sexist league, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um, if you look at the sense of humor around it, it's not good. Why does the NFL give why doesn't the NFL give Iowa a professional football team? Because then Minnesota would want one. So that's a knock on Minnesota. Um, it seems like okay, okay. What I'm trying to get at is the NFL has started. Tom Brady has already pulled off a come from behind miraculous win, and I think he's 44 years old. I might have heard that 400 times in the space of one minute on the broadcast last night. But the NFL is back, and investors have wasted no time jumping on the NFL gambling stock bandwagon. Football season pro in college is the sports betting industry what Christmas is to retailers. It's heaven. Over the past month, DraftKings stock is up 19%. Penn National Gaming is up 18%. Caesars Entertainment is up 17%. With the United States of America struggling to pay for all things that we provide, we look to gambling to create new taxes. Do you want to bet on the Jacksonville Jaguars with a promising but inexperienced quarterback and next to zero chance of near-term success with a coach that, well, he's a college coach playing in the NFL, and sometimes that doesn't work out. Guess what? You can bet on that. For investors, betting on sports gambling companies is a guess on the size of the total addressable market. If you're betting on the games themselves, that's a whole different thing. But I think online sports betting is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you watched the commercials last night of the NFL game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the other team that I don't know who they are, but I know who Tom Brady is, and that's all good in a bucket of job. Oh, it was the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, their owner, Jerry Jones, yellow teeth. He's got some wicked yellow teeth. Like, whoa, put down the cigarettes just for a minute, Jerry Jones. But, um, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sports gambling stocks. I'm going to repeat them one more time. DraftKings, Penn National Gaming, Caesars Entertainment. Now, this is where we get into a lot of nervousness. None of these companies are making a lot of money. They haven't shown a true path to profitable success, but 2023 is the year they're supposed to. Right now, 30% of the U.S. population has access to online sports betting. I think it'll get closer to 100% when all is said and done. Congressmen will say, hey, my state needs gambling because we can raise tax money and I can give money to whatever cause is important in my state, whether it's gun rights or abortion rights or uh, education or I don't know what's important to different states, right? So I think it's coming. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to slip that one in any way, shape or form. Producer inflation was a big, shocking number this morning. Producer inflation accelerated in August as wholesale prices rose a record 8.3% from a year ago. We are trying to see if the market is going to fight its way back today. After four down days, do we have a fifth down day? That would tell you that September has started pretty miserably. But producer price inflation is one of those things that we're watching right now. Inflation, because it's one of the stories of 2021. Will it be transitory or not? We know wage inflation tends not to be transitory. Once someone gives you a raise, they're not like, ah, we're going to take it back. Although it kind of happened a little bit. Walmart said, hey, we're done with quarterly bonuses. 
We're not going to do that. Hey, you worked over Christmas, you get a quarterly bonus because we're paying more people. We're paying people more money. So there is some clawback, but that's not the hourly clawback, is it? Final demand prices rose 8.3% from a year ago. That's the biggest increase on record going back to 2010. So we don't have a lot of data on that is what that tells you. There's inflation fears. There's also inflation fears tied towards supply chain issues, a shortage of various consumer and producer goods, heightened demand related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Will the producers be able to pass on the prices to you and I? It's a good question. For instance, about one third of the overall gain came in health beauty and optical goods, which jumped 7.8% prices related to outpatient hospital care held back falling 1.5%. Um, slaughtered poultry prices up 11%. Prices fell for everything that's made with iron, steel, and diesel fuel. But meat prices were up over 8.5%, although food prices up 2.9%. So it's kind of splattered is what I'm getting at. The NFL. I do like this time of year because you get the NFL, you get college, you get baseball. If you want a live sports distraction, you could probably find it 24-7-365, it feels like. Although, you know one thing I'm already annoyed with? NFL coverage on ESPN. Oh, did they go all in about talking about a game again and again and again? I don't think they realize we all have ADD and we've moved on. Social Security, it's in dire shape. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Apple. Apple's in the news as they have a big event coming up next week. And their stock seems to be holding right near all-time highs. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. I'm Rob Black. An education-first approach to managing your money. This is The Rob Black Show. This may or may not be in the podcast, but Lord's singing. She's a fascinating celebrity to me. I'm too old to say this, but I'll say it anyway. I think we all had a crush on an artist in our lifetime. If I was 25 years old right now, I'd be all about Lord. She did a dr- day drinking skit with uh, Seth Meyers. That's on YouTube. That's pretty hilarious. She talks about how her album's all influenced by the prescription drugs that her doctors are prescribing her. That's very honest. I like the day drinking um, let go of your image thing. Don't control your image because you know Ariana Grande would never do that. Now, Ariana Grande is wildly talented. But I'm more of a Lord person of us as a young man than... Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, Apple shares have been on fire heading into next week's widely anticipated launch of the next generation of iPhones. For now, analysts have been telling investors to buy the stock on the theory that Apple generally outperforms ahead of the annual debut. And then once it's out, we go, eh, okay. I've had my recent iPhone now for almost three and a half years, and it's just fallen apart. The right side button, I don't know what that one's called. The right side, my right thumb button. Uh, it no longer works. So it's like I almost have to shake my phone as if it's a snow globe to get it to turn on. So they have me every three, three and a half years now. It used to be every two years. Um, and these phones aren't cheap. Apple's one analyst is upping the price target to 175 from 165. A recent survey of 1,000 Americans found that only 6% plan to buy or upgrade the iPhone 13 in the coming months as a result we found it a little surprising that there's uh, just a lack of enthusiasm. But people are still talking about the iPhone 12 getting it, but not so much the iPhone 13 because people want the 5G that was marketed of the iPhone 12. But what's being marketed with the iPhone 13 seems to be streaming capabilities and influencers. So I see a couple analysts right around 170, 175. It is no longer a go, 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 go stock. It's too big. It's two and a half trillion dollars. For it to double now, it'd have to go to a $5 trillion valuation. 
I think you'll start seeing maybe spinoffs from Apple in the next three to five years. So you could unlock some shareholder value into some areas that still have exciting growth. But they're such a big company right now, going from $2.5 trillion to $5 trillion. It's tough to make a case. Unless augmented reality or cars take off, it's tough to make that case. Expectations are widespread at this point in time. They ordered more iPhone 13s. They did place a big order, and it looks about $90 million they're expecting to sell. That's increased confidence that they're doing well. But again, it's, it's a big company. That's worthy of note. Hey, last night I got rain in the area that I live in. I know you're saying most of America is going, yeah, so what? If you live in Northern California, that's like, you really tell me all about it. How did it sound? Like, it's been a long time since we've seen rain. Other things to talk about today, remote workers are on the move. And housing stocks are very interesting. What do we mean by remote workers are on the move? People are relocating to growing mid-tier cities across the country, which contributes even further to the perfect storm of high demand and low supply that was already underway before the pandemic. Surge in prices delaying home purchases and sending rents higher. The median home price in Boise sold for $469,100 in the second quarter. That same house one year ago was 41% cheaper. It's not true. It's jumped 41% in that time, but I didn't want to confuse you. The price spikes are spooking some established residents who are priced out of the areas like their own city. And they go out in the street and they go, thank you for being a cop. You just raised the value of my home that if I sell, thank you. But people feel it's moving so fast. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, confusing. It puts your, your head spinning. Can you imagine saying Boise, Idaho is up 41% year over year? I never thought I would say that. People are buying homes just by reviewing photos and videos. So 3,000 square foot house just went for $875,000 and the buyer was out of state and never set foot in the home. Fascinating. So the areas that are doing really well right now, Tucson, Arizona, Cape Coral, Florida, Boulder, Colorado, Barn Stable Town, Massachusetts, Boise City, Idaho, Naples, Florida, Austin, Texas, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Pittsfield. Oh, I drove through Pittsfield once and there is nothing there. I refer to Stockton as the armpit of California. Uh, Pittsfield was the armpit of Massachusetts. And same thing's happening. Crazy real estate prices. Tucson's up 50%. Cape Coral, Florida, up 57% on out-of-state views. People are willing to buy homes with videos. I bought a home recently with too much cash, which I'm okay with, but I'm finding out it's a money pit. New roof, new sewage clean out. Because mine is made out of clay, and you're like, how is it made out of clay? Well, it's the original one. And you're like, ugh. So we're still looking at mid-sized cities was the point of that angle. And we're willing to shop online now, which is just fascinating. I remember once I bought a home in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I went with a friend. We booked a plane trip. And I called a, like a Remax and said, hey, I'm going to be buying a home and I need to see homes this weekend. And by the end of the weekend, I'm going to make my decision. I, I wasn't flying back a second time. I was going to do it all in one weekend. It worked out. But that's a silly way of doing it. But doing it remotely with a Zoom call, hey, uh, real estate agent, Scott, can you uh, walk into the bathroom one more time for me and my wife? Me and my wife want to see the bathroom one more time. 
that's what's happening. Now, when you talk buying homes, you should also talk about home builders, in my opinion. Buyers looking for a new house may need to throw their name in a hat and hope to win the lottery. That's the thought. But there's hot markets that, you know, prime home lots are selling for $50,000 premiums in auctions. Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, where there's a lot of desert to the left, to the right, to the, the north, to the south, to up, above, below. There's just desert. So home builders are getting lots ready to build on. There's not a lot of discount going on right now. The number five home builder in the United States is in play. The number four home builder in the United States is in play. You see where I'm going out with this, right? Um, there's a smaller player called Taylor Morrison Homes, ticker symbol TMHC. I guess the ways you can play it is you can go with the big boys or you can go with the small boys. Some people go luxury. So the luxury home builder. Some people could go region like Taylor Morrison Homes. Your simple TMHC, they're really a, an Arizona kind of company. They're really a desert building kind of home builder. I thought I'd throw that out there. I don't have it fully fleshed out, and I probably should have saved it for future content. But home, like Apple, you're investing in new iPhones. You're investing in hopes for new AirPods. You're investing in hopes for a better watch. You're investing in, with home builders, you could go after regions. You can go after luxury you know what they say on Wall Street, like a company like a Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, you can always buy it. Because luxury never loses its, its luster in a good economy or bad economy. I don't know if that's so true, because I, I question now um, what the Kardashians and the Kanye Wests of the world can do to luxury brands by starting their own champagne or their own tequila. It's just a matter of time before celebrities start endorsing cryptocurrency. Oh, they already have endorsed cryptocurrency. It's just a matter of time before celebrities start endorsing diamonds and other luxury items. And this is the world now conversation. Amazon is dangling a free bachelor's degree as a new perk in fight for U.S. workers. I think this should be more and more the norm. Walmart offers some sort of educational support for their workers. Amazon's dangling a free bachelor's degree as a new perk. Um, it's offering to pay college tuition for more than 750,000 employees as it battles for hourly workers, escalates minimum wage fights. They're joining retailers, restaurant chains, garbage haulers, meat processors, dangling the prospect of a free college education away as a way of luring and retaining staff. I think Facebook, Amazon, no, let's not include Amazon. Well, maybe. Facebook and Apple need to start their own universities. And maybe they don't have football teams, but they have jobs at the end of them. Isn't it interesting that education is becoming a perk? I like it. And it is interesting. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Find me online at robblackshow.com. The fortune-making spirit of today's marketplace, The Rob Black Show. A personal financial plan with custom investment advice. That's why Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP services were built with you in mind. How can they help you? Find out at robblackshow.com. robblackshow.com. One of the big stories of the week, Amazon's new streaming hardware. They announced that they're making their own smart TVs effectively doing what Apple, Google, and Roku will not do at this time. Apple has something you could plug into your TV. Google has something you could plug into your TV. Roku has something you could plug into your TV. Amazon saying, hey, we'll just build it in. Good side and downside about that? I don't like plugging stuff in. Downside is I like to keep my TVs for five or seven years. And the upgrade cycle on a Roku or an Apple TV box is a lot faster than the upgrade cycle on a whole big old television especially if it's dug into a wall and, you know, 4k becomes 8k HDR becomes HDR 10. Then you get, you know, 
apto support, things like that. TVs, technologies, doesn't feel like you want to make that commitment for five years to technology that's going to be really outdated in five. But Amazon's doing it. One of the new things that's going to happen is video games on your television. Amazon wants it to happen. Uh, Apple has toyed with the idea of setting up some joystick controllers with their Apple TV product. It just doesn't feel very serious like Microsoft and Sony. But Amazon's also launching a new 4K streaming dongle called the Fire TV Stick 4 Max. It's 40% faster than the existing Fire TV Stick. It supports the new Wi-Fi 6 standard, which again is going to be a problem with the TV. As we get into new higher, faster standards of where the wireless fiber in your home can go. But Amazon's going to be selling the old Fire Stick for $50. The new one's going to be $55. Ooh, break the bank. I think I'll break the bank on that one. Meanwhile, new Fire TV software features this year include uh, Alexa, what should I watch? A recommendation mode of play something from Netflix. A voice command to activate the shuffle button. Nothing that's going to change our life. Maybe it's cool to show off once or twice, but people aren't going to be so impressed with you that they, they swoon. Or will they? Um, Hulu is pricing their product higher. They've announced that it's raising the cost of its on-demand streaming services by a buck on October 8th, bringing the price to $7 a month with ads or $13 a month without them. The price hike will not affect Hulu's live TV streaming service or the Disney bundle, which includes Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus for $14 per month. That's probably one of the best bundles out there if you can get by with it. Streaming is not cheap, and they're raising their prices. You know it, and I know it, right? So let's move on to the day that is. In macro-related news, President Biden and China's President Xi held their first phone call since February. Very little progress was made. Senator Brown and Finance Committee Chairman Wyden are proposing a 2% tax on share buybacks to help fund the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package. I don't know. We have... It feels like... Ugh. The unintended consequences of that, I don't know if, we, if we've if we thought of. So Apple says we're going to buy back $100 billion of our own stock because we're going to make $100 billion of cash this year. And it's going to cost them $102 billion to buy back $100 billion. Because $2 billion is going to go to the tax man just for buying back their own shares, which they've already been taxed on the income. I think that sounds a little bit like tyranny of taxation without representation or double taxation, which this country is kind of founded on as a bogus thing. But we even have another taxation that comes when we die, a death tax, an estate tax. If the founding fathers knew all this taxes were coming, I think they would have had a different idea of the uh, Constitution. But I'm not getting into founding fathers' arguments because I don't wear ye old powdered wig. Producer price index for final demand was up 8.3% on an unadjusted basis. That's insane. The key takeaway, if I can give you a key takeaway, is that while the month over month change slowed, the year over year growth rate rose to a fresh record. So we may still see, see home prices slowing in their appreciation right now, but on a year-over-year -year level, they're still hitting record highs on a month-over-month -month basis. The firm shares are doing well. They're up 22% today. They beat expectations on earnings and revenue. They're one of those companies where you buy now and pay later. They do the financing of. They made a relationship with Amazon earlier in the month. And what's interesting to note about that is Here's the metric that I'm going to equate to a firm. Today, they're moving on earnings. 
But in the future they're moving, it may be because we feel the consumer is healthy and can pay back their loans. It will be wildly fascinating. Next time there's a big old 10% unemployment recession. What a company like a firm who lends money and expects you to pay it back at a higher interest rate. It'll be interesting to see where they, how they stand. Kroger's in the news. They beat top and bottom line estimates and guided 2022 above expectations. They did beat on revenue and they did beat on earnings and they did say the rest of the year looks great, but they're down to down the news. They probably need to announce 5G or 6G or something like that, but they're a grocery store company and we don't really need 6G in our grocery stores. Kroger to me is the ultimate in boring. I'm not saying it's bad, but we all need food or we die. I think that's how that works. So we go grocery shopping. Now, sometimes there's new fancy ways of doing it like Instacart or Whole Foods, which costs a whole paycheck for two bags. So Kroger doesn't have a lot of margins, but they have a very visible business. Oil today is slightly higher, as is copper. 10-year treasury is sitting at 1.32%. Nothing really going on there. Nothing really going on. Let's take a look at how the overall market doing. The market fades a positive open. We're now looking at potentially five down days. And we can make an opera by the end of the show. Stock market so sad. Isn't that sad? Five down days on the Dow. Will it happen? Or will we stage a comeback at the end of the day? So right now, it's not looking like it. NASDAQ's up two points, but the Dow's down 134, down one third of a percent. The SP 500's down. Eh, SP 500 can still find some green. But the Dow looks like a five day losing streak. And you know what we call five days? Losing streaks? I don't know. If we get six-day losing streak, I think we get a free pizza. So we're going to be going one, two, three, four, five. We want six. But no, that's actually at a, a hockey game. Ah, five down days. What are we going to do with ourselves? We're having a good year is the answer. Be happy with what you got. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. My, my YouTube page is blowing up. Be a part of it from the beginning. It's Rob Black Show on YouTube. <laughs> Find us at robblackshow.com, robblackshow.com.